Welcome to this episode of Sykes Now Learning Hub, Introduction to LCMS Series. In this episode, we will talk about how to use calibration curves for quantitation by mass spectrometry. So, what is a calibration curve? A calibration curve is a plot of the observed signal intensity versus the actual amount of a target compound. You can use the measured signal intensities in the calibration curve to deduce the unknown amount in your samples. However, due to the different ionization efficacies, you cannot apply the calibration curve of compound A to compound B. Therefore, you need to perform a calibration curve for each of your target compounds. Before we move on with the discussion of calibration curves, let's have a closer look into the intensity plot. Most often, it is S-shaped. We can define three different ranges. At lower amounts, it usually has a flattened slope. With increasing amounts, it becomes linear before it starts to run into saturation at high amounts. Because we want to have a direct proportional change of the signal with the amount of the compound, it is mandatory that your calibration curve is within the linear range of the intensity plot. The curve shapes vary with the compound and their linear range will therefore be different. But how can we be sure that we are working within the linear range? The response factor can help. It is the ratio between an observed signal and the quantity of the analyte, or in mathematical terms. The response factor equals area divided by amount. It is compound specific, and it reflects its ionization efficiency or sensitivity. In an ideal calibration curve, the response factors are equal for each of the calibration levels as depicted here. In this extreme example of a non-linear calibration curve, the response factors of the lowest and the highest levels have different RFs. This is a mathematical indication that these levels are outside of the linear range. By using the response factors, you do not need to rely on an optical assessment. So far we have been looking into ideal calibration curves, where all observed values are on a straight line. In the real world, you can expect to have deviations in signal intensity, and we would need to decide how to best draw a line between these values. This can be done by a least square regression. Its purpose is to draw a line in a way that the variation in the Y or signal intensity axis is minimized for all calibration levels. We can apply the subcategory of a least square regression, the linear regression, if the calibration curve is within the linear range. The line can then be described as this mathematical function, which contains the slope and the y-intercept. You can easily rearrange the formula and calculate the unknown amount x from your calibration curve. Don't worry, all the mathematical operations will be performed by your Sykes software, but it is important for you to understand the general concept. Let's have a closer look into these calibration curves. The one on the left has low deviation in the signal intensities, whereas the one on the right shows a high deviation. Everyone may agree that the left curve can be considered as good, and the right one as bad. But how good is good and how bad is bad? Here, the correlation coefficient comes into play. It describes how well the points fit into the straight line, and it can vary between the values 0 and 1, with 1 indicating the perfect correlation. It is used to describe the quality of your calibration curve, and values need to be at least above 0.98. It is good practice to report at least three decimals of R squared. And which value is used to plot your calibration curve? You can either use the peak area or the peak height. The peak height is determined from the noise level at the base of the peak up to its apex. Though it is not technically wrong to use the peak height, the peak area generally provides a better quality of your calibration curve because it compensates for suboptimal peak shapes. In summary, a calibration curve is a plot of intensity versus the amount of a target compound, 
and you use it to calculate the amount in unknown samples. It needs to be within the linear range of the intensity plot. Its slope and the linear range will be different for each compound, so all of them require their own calibration curve. You can use the response factors and the R-squared value to evaluate the quality of your calibration curve. Thank you for watching this episode. To view the full training course, including progress checks and a final quiz to earn a certificate, go to sciex.com. Log in today to take advantage of the highly rated training material offered in the Sciex Now Learning Hub. You can use the links below.